Welcome to the Bible study lesson for the week of June 5th, 2022. I'm your host, Minister Marshall Bell. I greet you in the exalted name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Let us pray. Dear Master, help me to say the words that you would have me to say right now. Help me to come before your people boldly and speak up and tell them what you want me to say. Help me to convey it in a way that everyone will understand. Bless each home that's going to be represented here right now. Bless those in the pardon in their sins that don't know you as being their savior. Dear Master, help something. Help me to say something that will help them to understand that you are needed in their lives. Right now, Lord, bless me right now. Take away what should not be in me and put what you want in me so I can be with you and say your words. These are all other blessings I ask in our loving son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This week's lesson is entitled, What Do You Do Whenever You Feel As If The Lord Is Not Coming To Your Rescue? Let me repeat that. The lesson title is, What do you do whenever you feel as if the Lord is not coming to your rescue? <clears throat> Our scripture references are coming from John 11, 38-44. John 11, 38-44. Now, before I read this, I would like everyone to go back later and read the entire chapter of John 11. Remembering that prayer is needed first before you begin reading so that the Spirit will give understanding of what God is saying to you. I'm going to touch on a few other verses in John chapter 11 besides John 11, 38 through 44. I'm going to give you a bit of background because I would like everyone to know how we got to this point in the gospel. And so beginning with John 11, 38, 44, and it reads, Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you hear, have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I, standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Now, uh, as I told you, let us go back a bit, because when the Lord heard that Lazarus was sick, he also said this over in John 11 and 4. That reads, When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not under death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. But even after saying this, the Lord still stayed where he was for two more days. Why? Would he do this when this man was so close to death? 
even after he began his walk to the town where Lazarus lived, it was still going to take him another two days to get there. So why would he not hurry to heal his man <coughs> before he died? Two days staying where he had been and another two days walking, that's four days. And Lazarus could not hold out that long. But finally, the Lord said this in verse 7. Verse 11 and 7 says, Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to the Judea again. Let me move on. And over in verses 9 and 11, he says here, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Now, after saying this to the disciples, they still didn't understand his meaning. The Lord doesn't need to get in a hurry to help any of us. Even when we may feel that all hope is gone, the Lord is teaching us to have patience, dependence, and to have total faith in Him. Whenever He arrives to help with any of our needs, He is always on time. Love that song, On Time God. And that's what He is. He's always on time. He ain't never late. He always on time. He might show up what you think late or just in the nick of time <laughs> but he's on time all the time for your problems for your needs when he show up he show up and then a lot of time he just show out let me move on let's look at verses 14 15 verses 14 15 says here then Jesus said to them plainly Lazarus is dead and I am glad for your sake that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Now, he talking to the disciples. They, 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 they didn't comprehend what he said the first time. So he just told them straight up, Lazarus dead. And, and your faith ain't right yet. You, you got a little lacking going on here. You know? You, you've been walking around here with me all this time, but you still ain't comprehending just who I am. At times, the Lord has to tell us point blank what he's saying to us because sometimes we forget who we are praying to. Sometimes, some things seem as if it is impossible for it to happen. But our God has all power in his mighty hands to use in helping us at any time he chooses to do so. But still, we feel as if our needs have overwhelmed us because it would seem to us that they have made it into a place of no return. We sometimes think just because the door has been slammed in our face is over. But nothing is over until the God I serve says that it's over. Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And when the Lord got there, Mary stayed in the house. But Mary, Ma Ma but Martha ran to the Lord and said this to him in verse 24 through 26. Let me get there. We're going to get all this. I want you to go back and read all this stuff. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last days. Jesus said to her, 
I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may be dead, he still lives. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said yes. She believed it. And what she did? She believed in Jesus totally. She understood what he was saying. She believed in him that if you believe in him, you'll never die. You're going to die one day, but you can open your eyes in glory. You choose, though. Well, you going to open your eyes. You either believe what I'm saying here and open your eyes in glory, or don't believe and be like Ron Reagan and open your eyes in hell. He's not afraid of hell. So, take your choice. Power. Almighty power. That's what my master is saying here. Power to raise the dead, heal the sick, give sight to the blind, and help the lame to walk. But he didn't stop there because he is not dead. He is very much alive and well, sitting on the right hand of the Father pleading our cases. He is using that same power to take care of our needs and some of our desires through having faith in him and him alone. Hmm. After this, Martha ran and got a sister, Mary, who then ran to the Lord. She hadn't, she hadn't showed up until Martha went and got her. Martha went and got her, she ran to the Lord. This is what she say though, when she get there. Verse 32. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, listen to this, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. See, that's the thing that a lot of people put on our God. If you had showed up on time, if you had been here when, when I called you, you know, well, you're talking to the Creator. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You're talking to the one that made everything you see. That's who she's talking to. And she had no idea. She, she could not comprehend that he was God and he's standing right there before her. Standing right there in her face, she's still getting confused. Too many people are getting confused right now. They're not understanding who my God is. They don't know. They not. They it's not going into their minds correctly. They they dependent on themselves instead of my God. They're putting their faith in the wrong thing. They're putting their faith in whatever instead of. Having faith in God himself. And Jesus is God. At this point, we find the shortest verse in the entire Bible. Verse 35. Jesus wept. That is every word in the verse. Only two words. Two words, Jesus wept. But these two words which are stating what Jesus did are very powerful and have a very dangerous meaning for unbelievers. Very dangerous. Very dangerous meaning for unbelievers. The people thought that the Lord was weeping for Lazarus, but that is not the case. The Lord was weeping for all unbelievers. He was weeping for them then and in the future or now or past now if you don't believe he was weeping for you unbelievers which will end up in hell because of their unbelief in him 
Well, let me tell each of you something. He surely will not be shedding any tears for me because I will be with him. My room has been reserved in the Lord's kingdom and it is waiting for my arrival to take possession of it. Do you have your room? Do you have a place in heaven? Are you going to glory? Are you, are, are you prepared? Have you had your ticket checked? Are you getting on the train going the right direction? Or are you going to hell? It's up to you to decide this one. He can, he's not going to make you do it. Are you going to land the milk and honey? Or are you going to place where you're going to burn in hell? Crinching tea. It's up to you. Decide. But now, we have arrived at our scripture readings for the day. So let's look at each of these scriptures, beginning with John 11, 38. John 11, 38, we're going to do them one by one. Then Jesus again groaned in, him, in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Now that groaning means... He was a little agitated. He was a little, a little upset with these folks because they wasn't getting it right. He, he, you know, it was bothering them a little bit. That's the reason he, he, he having them feeling. He's doing that. They not understanding. But I'm telling you right now what the case was going on here. And, 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 and you know, he, he, he like, I told these folks. I've told them over and over and over. They, ain't, they are not getting it, you know. That's the reason he's growing in himself. He's getting a little upset with them. I want God upset with me. He, he don't have to get he, he get upset with me about a lot of other things, but this won't be one of them. <laughs> That's not the problem with me. The word is used to express anger. Do you hear that? The word is used to express anger, deep feelings and for stern admonishment. I don't need none of that. I got enough problems. Satan give me enough help. I don't need Jesus mad at me. <laughs> Not me. No, he, he probably upset with me some other things because I don't do everything right. I, I'm a sinner just like everybody else. I have faults. But that's not going to be one of my disbelief. I don't disbelieve in nothing he do, can do. I think he can do anything. I know he can do anything but fail. Let me move on. Verse 39. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time, there's a stench. For he has been dead four days. Now, I'm very sure that the mess that you have been going through stinks also. I know it stinks to you. It, 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 it smells bad. Your car needs repair. Your air condition then just stopped working and it's about to be 100 and something degrees around here. Gas prices is just too high. Four dollars. I paid four dollars and five cents a day, and, and the one around Coney went up to four twenty nine. And in other states, it's up to eight dollars and something. That's too high. I never seen a gas price that high. Half your bills, you can't pay. Cause I mean, that's taking money out your pocket. The food price is going up. The gas price is going up. So it's taking money away from the where you need to pay your bills. Do I have enough money to feed my family? Just financial problems in general. Then turn around and look at cancer, diabetes, heart trouble. COVID-19 just won't, will not go away. I'm sick and the doctors don't know what to do. Too many people are saying that. God do. I'm asked to know how to take care of all these problems. You got to give it to him. You got to turn it over to him. The war in Ukraine, mass shootings, 
every other month, every other week. Now it look like every other day. Just all the wasted human lives all over the world. Some of the problems that we have have lasted much longer than four days. This mess has been going on for months and sometimes years. We find ourselves asking God, when, Lord? Oh, when are you going to help me? When are you going to meet my needs? But look deeply in the John 11 40. John 11 40 says, Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Hmm. The key word in John's gospel is belief. Faith unlocks our understanding of scriptures and releases the scriptures activity to our lives. Faith, like love, evidences itself in obedience. Finally, faith approaches God boldly to receive from him the things it needs. Believe in the miracles of Jesus. Understand that the glory of God is revealed to those who believe. Recognize that it is what you practice of God's word that brings blessing to yourselves and others. Recognize that Jesus is the only way to God. Know Jesus to know God. Pray for and expect the Greater Things Ministry of the Church. Do not neglect to ask the Father for those things you need to live and do His work. You got to put God first, though. He can't. He don't do second place. No, he he don't do no second running. I, I was looking at something the other day. I uh, hope I can bring it up right quick. Because I really want to say that in here. And I have it on a Facebook page here. On my Facebook page. And I would like to read this to you. What it says here. Because uh, this is stuck with me ever since I saw it. It says here. I stand in awe of God's grace. It's amazing to the person feeling like they've been left behind or that it is too late for you. Let this serve as your reminder that God is still in the miracle working business and your only job is to show up and run your race. God will do the rest. How he does it is in our business. When he would when he will do it is isn't our concern. Just know that our Father will never leave us or forsake us. Winning is in our DNA. Let me move on. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He always acknowledged his father. He never, never, ever doesn't bring up the father. He's equal to the father. He's God himself. The spirit is equal to the father. It's God himself. But neither one of them do not, not acknowledge the other. They all work together. They work in, in, in tandem. They synchronize. Whatever one does, the other one does. Whatever the one is saying, the other one says. They, those three make up our God. Three in one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. They all make up the three in one. 
Let me move on. 1142, it says, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that they may believe that you sent me. He don't have to say nothing for me. I know who he is. He chose me to do this. He chose me to be a minister. He, 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 I mean, he let me do all my, my wrongdoing all those years. And then he showed up one day and told me, <laughs> I need to work for you, him. I need to give my life to him. I got to change. I don't know why he chose me. I mean, bad as I was, I've told you many times all the stuff I did. But he still chose me to do what I do. I wouldn't have picked me. No way possible. I mean, I was bad news. But right now, I am doing as much for him as I was doing for Satan back in the day. My life has been changed. To be with him. To do for him. What's your life doing? How your life going? You know, how your problems going? Can you cope with what you're going through? Are you had, I got many problems. But I've had problems, big problems in the past. And each time, every time, my God it came through for me. Every time. And right now, even though I got problems, I don't see my God not coming through for me. He done it too many times. Now, I don't know if he testing me or if he making my strength stronger, my faith stronger. I don't know. My faith is strong, though. I know God. I know my God. I know Jesus. I mean, I've been in some pretty bad situations. And this one's not that great. But I know he's there and I know he not hadn't left me and I know he's gonna fix this for me. I'm not worried that I'm, you know, I worry a little bit, but that's human nature. But reality, no, I do not worry cause I know God, I know my God, I know the Lord, I know Jesus, I know what he's gonna do. I know how this is gonna turn out, I already know. I mean, I don't know why he's taking so long to do what I ask him to do. Same thing about you. I know some of you are wondering, Lord, where are you? How come you haven't fixed this? Sometimes he needs to build our patience up. Sometimes he needs to test us. Sometimes he needs to make sure that we got our head where it needs to be. And I understand that. So I'm going to hold on to my God. I'm going to hold on to Jesus. I'm going to hold on to his whatever I can grab. You know, if I can't grab nothing but a toe, I want that toe. If I can't grab nothing but his garment, like I talk, talked about a couple of weeks ago, I'm going to grab something. I'm holding on. I ain't letting go. As long as he don't let go of me, I ain't letting go of him. Let me move on. Verse 43. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. If my God hadn't said Lazarus, every dead person on the planet would have got up and started walking around right then. That wasn't what he wanted to do. He didn't want everybody to get up. He didn't want one of them. He had to be specific. He had to say, Lazarus, come forth. Because he's standing in front of the grave and the person inside the grave is the one he wanted to come out. He didn't want everybody to get up right there. If he had to put Lazarus on the front of that, every person on earth would have got up out the wherever they was and came forward. That's how much power my master got. He got power. All power. Not some power. All power. Let me move on to 1144. 
1144 says, And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot, with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. See, that's what I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on the Lord to say, Loose him and let him go. All them problems I've been going through, I'm waiting on the Lord to say, Loose him and let him go. All that mess I've been having in my life, I'm waiting on the Lord to say, Loose him and let him go. See, he's going to say that one day when he get ready in his time. All I got to do is just hang on and have some faith. All I got to do is keep believing in my master. I, I, whatever happened, I got to hang on and not let go. If you would only have faith in God, not a faith that you show others just to make them believe that you have faith. I'm talking about a total faith that the Lord will do what he said he would do in our lives. That's the kind of faith I got. I believe. I don't know about you. You know, <laughs> I've been tested in fire. All kind of things that have happened in my life. <clears throat> well, I can't do nothing else but believe. I, it, it's been things that happened that I know there's no way possible that I could should have made it through those situations if Jesus wasn't with me. I've been to war. I've had wrecks on the highway. You know, where I know I should have been gone. When I was overseas, the bullets was going by me. I mean, <laughs> the bombs were being dropped. I'm here. Some of the people that were near me didn't make it. I'm here. And I know why I'm here. Because <laughs> my master allowed me to live on. In conclusion, I want you to hear something over in Matthew. Matthew 6, 26. Just one verse. It says, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Evidently, I must be pretty valuable to the Lord, and you are too. Why are you so valuable? Because when He made that first man, He breathed breath of life into him. Got down on his hands and knees and made him. Got dirty. Then he put his mouth on that nasty man. Then he put him to sleep. Took a rib from that man. And made a woman. That's the reason the man needs his woman. Because he's not all together whole. Without a mate. That's, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Whether you want to believe me or not. Didn't say nothing about women and women. Didn't say nothing about Eve and Yvette. Or Steve and Stephen. Didn't say that. Man and woman. He took a rib from a man and made a woman. Supposed to be together. Those two. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. But you can be whatever you want to be. That's up to you. I'm not going to have anything to say about that. I've said all I'm going to say. But you decide. You decide. You decide right now. What do you do whenever you feel as if the Lord is not coming to your rescue? I've just told you the playbook, the game plan. I just told you how to act, how to react. How to hold on to and have the faith in God that you need to have. I'm not talking about play faith. I'm talking about real faith. Like I said, God has done so many things in my life. I can't turn around. I'm not going back the other way. I had fun when I was out there. I thought <laughs> I got better feeling right now. And I'm going to stick with my God. If you've been listening to what I've been saying. And you really want to change your life. And grab hold of something that will hold on to you. Grab hold of somebody that's going to hold on to you. Pray with me right now. Dear Master, I'm a sinner. I've been doing all the things that your word said I should not do. 
But I'm tired of being that kind of person. I want to change my life. I want to get it straight. I want to be one of your disciples. I've been listening to that minister. I've heard his words. The words that he spoke came out of his mouth. But they came from you, Lord. Everything I've said came from you. Help someone to understand right now that you are the way to go. Now, Lord, as I always say, thank you for choosing me to speak to your people. Thank you for allowing me to convey your words. Thank you for allowing me to come to for them boldly and say what you have had me to say. Bless each one that's represented here. Bless each person in the part of their sins that don't know you. Help them to understand that they can know you. They need to get to know you before it's too late and they die and go to hell. These are all the blessings I ask. In thy loving son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I am Minister Marshall Bell. And as usual, I've had a great time talking with you. I am one of the ministers at Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church, where my pastor is J.A. Molan. We I'm one of the five ministers at my church. We had a pastor and five more ministers. Well, we preach the word of God as it is written. You're going to hear what God said. You're not going to, we're not going to sugarcoat nothing. We're not going to change it around, make it sound good, make you feel better. We're going to tell it to you just like the word says. If the word can't make you feel better, just like it is, we're not going to juice it up for you. If it cuts you, I'm sorry, because it cuts me before I tell it to you. So, as usual, I don't know what the Lord's going to have me talk about next week. It's up to him. This is his word, not mine. So I don't open my mouth until he tells me what he wants me to say. So I'm so happy that you will be, have been with me. And I hope to hear, be, hope you're with me again next week. But until then, bye-bye. Thank you for hearing me.